David Koechner, best known for his roles in Anchorman and The Office, was arrested in Indiana, and he did almost everything you shouldn't do during a DUI stop. But it's not all Mr. Koechner's fault that he fell into the officer's traps. They use a variety of tricks and techniques to induce compliance and get you to incriminate yourself. In fact, the dash camera video provides a perfect textbook example of how a DUI stop is normally conducted. Let's walk through Mr. Koechner's stop and see if you think he's got a chance for acquittal. But first of all, if you never want to get arrested for DUI, don't drink and drive. What you got? Glossy eyes, I can smell that car when I walked up to the car. I have defended hundreds, maybe thousands of people against DUI charges. And in almost every case, the officer sees glossy eyes or glassy eyes, depending on how they say it. I don't think judges really give much weight to that indicator. They claim it indicates intoxication, but glassy or glossy eyes can be caused by many factors, including simply having dry eyes. So I don't really think it's a very strong factor that indicates actual impairment from alcohol. But what does hurt Mr. Koechner at this point is the odor of alcohol. Typically, the way I see that written in police reports is, I detected the strong odor of an alcoholic beverage emanating from the suspect's breath. If the police pull you over and smell alcohol, they're going to dig like a dog whose girlfriend is on the other side of the fence. I got a couple lane violations on him. Okay. Was he uh, over the dash line, solid fog line, both? Uh, white line. White line a couple of times? Yep. Okay. For the police to stop your car, they need reasonable, articulable suspicion that you have broken a law or that a crime is afoot. In Mr. Keckner's case, the original deputy who pulled him over says that he observed the vehicle crossing over the solid white fog line a couple of times. In every state that I know of, that's a traffic violation, which means that the police likely have a very solid reason to stop Mr. Keckner's vehicle. But what happens next can make or break your case in court. Um. So it's my understanding you're going to West Virginia? Yes, sir. Okay. Gotcha. Um, where are you coming from tonight? Um, Cincinnati. Cincinnati? Okay. Um, what part of Cincinnati? The airport. Look, Mr. Koechner had no choice but to pull over for the deputy's emergency lights or else he'd be facing a charge for eluding, which is no bueno. Then, Indiana law likely requires that he must provide his license and registration, maybe even insurance card, upon the deputy's request. But now, once the officer starts asking questions, Mr. Koechner has every right under the Fifth Amendment to the United States Constitution to not answer those questions. Trooper Beam then gets chummy and asks some seemingly innocuous questions. But then he gets to the key thing that he really cares about. What's your last name? I was going to say, I thought that looked like you. Okay. Sure. Were you out, uh, are you doing something in Ironton? No, uh, uh, Huntington first. Okay. Huntington second. I got gotcha. you. Um, how much have you had a drink tonight? One. One beer? Or one uh, shot of liquor or what? No, no. One beer. One beer? <laughs> Two drinks is a running joke among people in this area of the law, since nobody ever has more than two drinks when they're out with their friends. But now, David has just admitted to consuming alcohol, which does not help him go free, and it does not help his lawyer down the road. What would have helped him at this point? I plead the fifth. And what happens next is one of the key lies that I see from the police almost every single day. Um, I'm just gonna ask you to step out and run you through a couple things to make sure you're safe to drive, okay? Trooper Beam is not trying to make sure that Mr. Koechner is safe to drive. Trooper Beam is trying to determine if he can muster enough evidence to arrest Mr. Koechner for DWI and make an easy case for him to pile up his stats in court. So don't do the roadside sobriety tests. But then Trooper Beam makes a mistake. Perfect. So what I'll ask you to do is follow the tip of my pen with your eyes and eyes only. Trooper Beam is about to administer the horizontal gaze nystagmus test, but you can see the police flashing lights from the deputy's car shining and flashing on Mr. Koechner's face. This test is trying to determine if Mr. Koechner's eyes are bouncing or jerking involuntarily due to alleged impairment from alcohol. However, the police training manuals for how to conduct this test even admit that if the suspect is facing flashing lights from a police car, it can induce nystagmus. I see officers botch this test a lot, and Trooper Beam here is no exception. He does seem to realize that he's messing up the test with the lights, and he tries to have the lights cut off and restart the test. But the damage is already done at this point, and Mr. Koechner likely already has induced nystagmus in his eyes. Yet another reason to refuse the roadside tests. And here's the dumbest part of the entire encounter. 
Okay. All right, so what I'll ask you to do is imagine a straight line going from you to my front license plate. Are you able to imagine that line? Yes, sir. All right. No! This is the nine-step walk and turn test, and it's difficult to do even if you're completely sober and have good balance. You know what would be good? Hitch, kick, kind of, and then a barrel turn. Ha! Plus, walking an imaginary line for an officer is sort of like asking a mobster who robbed the bank. I didn't see anything. At this point, Trooper Beam offers for Mr. Keckner to do the test barefoot since he's wearing boots. Up to you. I know you have boots on. If you want to take it with your boots on, that's fine. If you want to do it with your boots off, that's fine. Just... Seriously? Who wants to walk down the shoulder of a highway barefoot? It's probably littered with gravel and maybe even broken glass. This is Mr. Keckner's third chance to decline further testing, but he continues to comply. I want you to keep your hands down to your side and don't stop until you've completed the instructions. Do you understand? Nine. Yes, sir. All right, you may begin if you understand the instructions. Trooper Beam uses a classic law enforcement technique to continue to induce compliance and keep Mr. Keckner cooperative. He tells Mr. Keckner he's doing a fine job, even though Trooper Beam knows that's not true. So the trooper starts another classic test known as the one leg stand. All right, what I'm going to ask you to do when I tell you to begin, left or right foot, it doesn't matter to me. It's totally your choice, whichever one you'd like. Take that foot of your choice, hold it approximately six inches above the ground. Unless you go to yoga three times a week, this test is hard as well. And Trooper Beam critically has not asked Mr. Keckner if he has any balance problems or any problems with his legs, knees, hips, or back that might impact his ability to do this complicated test. So remember, this encounter is not about warming up for a CrossFit routine, and it's not about trying to see if Mr. Keckner is safe to go on the, down the road. It's about trying to see if Trooper Beam can pile up enough clues of impairment to justify an arrest of Mr. Keckner. Last thing I'll ask you to do is just walk to the front of my car for me. Would you put your hands behind your back? Yeah, You're under arrest for ODI, operating a vehicle while impaired. If Mr. Keckner had refused to talk politely and refused to do the roadside tests, this encounter might have ended without him being arrested. And even if he was arrested, all they would have to justify the DUI arrest would be the odor of alcohol and a little bit of swerving. But these days, have you seen how people drive? Most people swerve as they go down the road. To see how someone got arrested for DUI while sitting at home, check out this next video. And thank you so much for your patience while we've had a bit of a sporadic posting schedule. But now that I've cleared out all the confidential documents from my garage, we'll get back on schedule with a new video every other Tuesday. And remember, don't talk to the police.